So, in this uh, lecture, we are going to look at the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Uh, this is the uh, last of the cycle that we will consider in this uh, module on thermodynamic cycles. Um, in contrast to all the cycles that we have uh, looked at so far, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle is a power absorbing cycle and uh, what we are going to discuss today is the, uh, is the cycle that is used in domestic refrigerators and domestic air conditioners. Okay. Uh, this was discussed in uh, detail in the previous course. So, for those of you who have not gone through that material, I suggest that you uh, go through this the module on uh, vapor compression cycle in the previous lecture, but we will quickly recap whatever was uh, said there. Uh, so, basically um, uh, we start at uh, state 1 here where the refrigerant. So, here the refrigerant is uh, the working substance. So, similar to the uh, uh, Rankine cycle where water was the working substance and it uh, remained uh, as water throughout the cycle here uh, refrigerant is the working substance and it remains as refrigerant throughout unlike the, uh, the air standard cycles where the air was taken in and then usually it is mixed with fuel and burnt. So, you have air coming in and then combustion gases leaving. So, the working substance does not execute a cyclic process there. In, in this case, the refrigerant is the working substance and it executes a cyclic process. Okay? Um, so, let us um, uh, start with uh, uh, state 1. So, state 1 is entry to the compressor. So, here the working substance is uh, at uh, low pressure and relatively low temperature and it can be a saturated uh, vapor or slightly superheated also. It does not matter. Let us write it down as saturated vapor. So, that is the uh, thermodynamic state at state 1. So, the uh, refrigerant then enters the compressor where it is compressed to high pressure, high temperature and superheated. Okay. So, the high pressure high temperature uh, refrigerant is then sent to the condenser where it loses heat with the ambient. So, if you look at uh, say slightly older uh, refrigerators, you should be able to see the uh, cooling coils at the back of the refrigerator. So, that is the condenser where the refrigerant loses heat with the ambient. So, as it comes out of the condenser, the uh, refrigerant is at a high pressure. Um, reasonably high temperature, not very high, reasonably high temperature and uh, it actually usually comes out as a saturated liquid, although this uh, need not exactly be the case, but for now let us uh, take it as saturated liquid. Okay? Now, the refrigerant is then throttled in the throttling valve. So, the high pressure reasonably high temperature uh, refrigerant now comes out as low pressure, low temperature saturated mixture. So, the temperature of the refrigerant drops as a result of throttling and it then enters the evaporator. So, this is the refrigerated compartment or the air conditioned room. So, the refrigerant then the cold refrigerant picks up the heat from the refrigerated compartment and as it picks up the heat it undergoes change of phase and then it, it goes from being a saturated mixture to a saturated vapor and the cycle is repeated. Now, we may illustrate the, um, uh, the cyclic process executed by the refrigerant on a TS diagram or on a pH diagram. I will come to the pH diagram uh, next. Let us first look at the TS diagram. Okay? So, just like the Rankine cycle or the Brayton cycle, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle also operates between two isobars P equal to PC which is the condenser pressure and P equal to PE which is the evaporator pressure. Okay? So, state 1, uh, we have uh, taken it to be a saturated uh, vapor. So, saturated vapor at evaporator pressure. So, it enters the compressor where it is compressed from state 1 to 2 s in case of an isentropic compression. Uh, in, the, uh, in the situation where we allow for uh, internal irreversibilities in the compressor, the end state will be state 2. So, you can see that the state corresponding to 2 is high pressure, 
high temperature and superheated as we as I mentioned before. So, it is then taken to the condenser and it um, uh, loses heat to the ambient at constant pressure, undergoes change of phase starting from here and the fluid leaves the condenser as a saturated liquid at condenser pressure. So, it is then throttled in the throttling valve. So, this is the throttling uh, process. So, it is throttled to a low temperature, low pressure uh, saturated mixture and it then enters the evaporator where it picks up the heat. So, this is the evaporator and this is the condenser. Now, uh, this cycle is called the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Even if the compressor is not ideal, for example, even if the compression process has internal irreversibilities, this cycle is still usually referred to as the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle in the refrigeration community. There are two reasons for that. First one is that uh, TH, which is the temperature of the hot reservoir or the reservoir to which heat is rejected. So, TH usually in the case of an ideal vapor compression cycle corresponds to the saturation temperature of condenser pressure. Okay. So, T h is T sat of P c and T c the temperature of the cold reservoir or the cold reservoir from which heat is drawn by the refrigerant. Okay. Remember T c is the temperature of the uh, refrigerated compartment. So, this is where the heat is drawn uh, by the refrigerant. So, this corresponds to the saturation temperature of the evaporator pressure. Okay, that is number 1. Number 2, state 1 is a saturated vapor in the case of the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle and state 3 is a saturated liquid. So, this is a saturated liquid and this is a saturated vapor. So, TH is equal to T sat of P c, T c equal to T sat of P e and state 1 exit of uh, evaporator is a saturated vapor state, exit of condenser is a saturated liquid state. So, this cycle is usually referred to as the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle in the refrigeration community. Now, um, we may wonder or you may wonder why uh, the diagram has to be illustrated in different uh, in a different set of coordinates. Why not just stay with T s? Why do we need this uh, P h coordinates? Okay? Um, it uh, turns out to be an interesting question. So, let us look at the processes that the refrigerant undergoes in the um, uh, in the in the cycle. Okay? So, for 1 is a phase change process and this as you can imagine is an isothermal process or isobaric process. Isobaric slash isothermal because it is a phase change process that is the process that the refrigerant undergoes in the evaporator. Okay. Now, 2, 3 is isobaric part of it is isothermal, but 2, 3 is isobaric pressure remains constant as the uh, refrigerant loses heat to the ambient. 3, 4 assuming that the uh, change in specific volume as a result of throttling is not very large that the specific volume more or less remains the same. You know that uh, throttling is an isenthalpic process. So, this is an isenthalpic process. So, you can see that 2 out of the 4 processes in the cycle are constant pressure processes and 1 process is a constant enthalpy process. So, which means if I choose P and H as coordinates, then the process will be a straight line in the in a pH coordinate space and the third process which is the throttling process will also be a straight line aligned with the axis. Okay. So, if I use pH coordinates, then these two processes will be aligned with the coordinate axis and this will be aligned with the other axis, which is why we would like to illustrate uh, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle in a pH diagram also and this is extensively used in the refrigeration community. So, as you can see here, 4 1 <coughs> evaporator 
constant pressure process at PE and 2S or 2 to 3 is a constant pressure process at the condenser pressure. Three four <coughs> throttling process, constant enthalpy, which is now aligned with the <coughs> the uh, H equal to constant line. Okay, so one to two s looks like this. In case the process uh, actually has internal irreversibility, still adiabatic, then the state point shifts from two s to two. Okay, so, the pH uh, coordinates actually are extremely just as useful as the TS coordinates in depicting the process and is uh, very widely used in the refrigeration community. But <clears throat> in this course though, we will stay with the TS diagram. So, this is an ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Okay, so, these points are very, very important. Let me emphasize uh, this again. TH equal to T sat of PC, TC equal to T sat of PE. So, this is the TH is the temperature uh, uh, of the uh, high temperature reservoir to which heat is rejected by the refrigerant. TC is the temperature of the low temperature reservoir uh, to which from which heat is absorbed by the refrigerant okay. and saturated uh, vapor at the exit of the evaporator, saturated liquid at the exit of the condenser. Let us uh, go through a worked example now. So, uh, an ideal vapor compression cycle using refrigerant R134A. We no longer use R134A because it is uh, not environmentally friendly. We have much better refrigerants now, but um, uh, we use uh, R134A in the course for purposes of illustration only. This can be replaced with any other refrigerant once the property values and the property tables are available. Okay? So, here it is given that uh, this is an ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Temperature of the refrigerator space is minus 5 degrees Celsius. So, that means Tc is equal to minus 5 degrees Celsius. The refrigerant leaves the condenser as a saturated liquid at 30 degrees Celsius. So, that means Th is equal to 30 degrees Celsius. Refrigerant enters the compressor as saturated vapor at, at the rate of 0 0.0041 meter cube per second. We are asked to determine the power input, rate of heat removal and COP as well as the second law efficiency and rate of exergy destruction in the individual components. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor is given to be 73 percent. So, this is an ideal vapor compression cycle. Since it is ideal, state point 1 is a saturated vapor at entry to the compressor. So, V1 equal to Vg and H1 equal to Hg and S1 equal to Sg from the uh, saturated, uh, saturated temperature table. So, the mass flow rate of the refrigerant since volume flow rate is given M dot is equal to V1 dot the volume flow rate. I am sorry. Since um, volume flow rate is given, we may evaluate m dot equal to v1 dot over v1 and that is what we have done here. So, the mass flow rate comes out to be 0 0.0495 kg per second. H3 is equal to Hf at 30 degrees Celsius because it is an ideal vapor compression uh, cycle. S3 may also be retrieved from the table and H4 equal to H3 because throttling is an isenthalpic process. So, H4 equal to H3. State 2S is uh, superheated at a pressure which is P sat of 30 degrees Celsius. So, that pressure corresponds to 770.6 kilo Pascal. Okay. Let us just take a quick look here. So, state 2S is a superheated state at a pressure Pc which corresponds to the saturation uh, pressure of uh, Th or 30 degree Celsius. So, we can get H2S from the superheated table through interpolation 
and the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is given to be 73 percent. So, from the definition of the isentropic efficiency, notice that this is known, this is known, this is known, this is known. So, H2 may be evaluated to be 280.3 kilojoule per kg. And using this value of the specific enthalpy and uh, the uh, pressure, we may interpolate and get S2 to be 0 0.96285. Notice that this is more than the value for uh, S2S. S2S is 0.9345. So, S2 is equal to 0 0.96. So, the state uh, and the exit of the compressor lies to the right of state uh, 2S. So, from steady flow energy equation, we may get the compressor power to be 1.6211 kilowatts. And again from steady flow equation applied to the uh, condenser, we can get the uh, heat removed in the condenser to be 9.4264 kilowatts. And by applying steady flow energy equation to the evaporator, we may get the heat removed in the evaporator to be 7.622 kilowatts, but we, uh, we have been asked to evaluate this in tons. Okay? So, 1 ton of refrigerator, refrigeration I am sorry is equal to 211 kilojoule per minute, a heat removal rate of 211 kilojoule per minute. So, 1 ton of refrigeration is defined as the heat removal rate that is required to convert 1 ton of water at liquid water at 0 degree Celsius to ice at 0 degree Celsius in 24 hours. That is the definition for 1 ton of refrigeration and that corresponds to a heat removal rate of 211 kilojoule per minute. So, we may then convert 7.622 kilowatts to 2.167 tons. So, you may recall that when you go to the shop to buy an air conditioner for instance, you are normally asked you know do you want a 1 ton AC, 2 ton AC and so on. So, that is what the ton the uh, terminology that is uh, this is what it means. So, COP for the refrigerator is nothing but QC dot divided by uh, power input to the compressor and that works out to 4.702. Now, if you go back to the cycle, notice that and in the condenser exergy is recovered and in the evaporator also exergy is recovered. Please go back and check the module on exergy. This is a low temperature reservoir, which is actually uh, from which heat is extracted. So, that means exergy is recovered in this case, the sign for uh, x and q are opposite in this case. So, here x is supplied and x is recovered in uh, these two devices. So, x supplied is equal to the power. So, x dot recovered is what we get in the condenser where heat is rejected. So, here the direction of heat flow and the direction of exergy flow are the same whereas here the direction of heat flow and direction of exergy flow are opposite. Okay. So, this is x recovered that comes out to be 1.0088 kilowatts. Notice that T h in this case is 30 degree Celsius that is a temperature of the reservoir to which heat is rejected by the refrigerant. This is the temperature of the reservoir from which heat is extracted by the refrigerant. Okay, so, the second law efficiency comes out to be 62.23 percent. So, this aspect is very important. So, you must bear this in mind that this is uh, exergy that is recovered. Now, if we apply entropy balance equation to the individual components, we can get the following things. So, rate of exergy destruction in the compressor works out to 0.4182 there is no heat loss from the compressor because it is still adiabatic although internally irreversible. So, this uh, loss of exergy or entropy generation is due to internal irreversibility in the compressor. No external irreversibility because it is insulated. Rate of exergy destruction in the condenser again this is uh, uh, heat transfer across a finite temperature difference. So, this is due to external irreversibility. So, you may see that when the uh, when the uh, refrigerant enters the condenser, it is at a much higher temperature compared to T h. So, there is heat loss uh, across a finite temperature difference which is why we have um, entropy generation or exergy destruction in the condenser. 
throttling as we already saw uh, is an internally irreversible process. So, the exergy destruction is due to internal irreversibility. But if you look at the exergy destruction in the components, you can see that the maximum contribution comes from the compressor, others contribute um, quite uh, less than what we get from the internal due to internal irreversibility in the compressor. Now, uh, we have looked at uh, the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. In the case of an actual cycle, it can never be guaranteed that the state at the exit of the evaporator will always be a saturated vapor. In general, the uh, state at the exit of the evaporator is slightly superheated. Similarly, we can never always guarantee that the state will uh, at the exit of the condenser will be a saturated liquid. It is almost always slightly compressed or we may say this is a compressed liquid state. And notice in this case that um, uh, Th is not the same as T sat of P c, T c is not the same as T sat of P e. Okay? So, T h in this case is less than T sat of P c and uh, T c is I am sorry greater than T sat of P e. Uh, now, T c has to be greater than T sat of P e because that is the only way heat can be uh, extracted by the refrigerant from the refrigerated space. Okay. Similarly, T h has to be less than T sat of P c because that is the only way heat can be transferred from the refrigerant to the ambient or high temperature reservoir. So, we see here the actual cycle illustrated on a pH diagram. The open circles indicate the uh, ideal uh, uh, vapor compression cycle and the actual compression cycle as you can see here it is slightly superheated and here it is slightly subcooled and that may be a better terminology. So, compressed liquid or slightly subcooled. Now, let us see what uh, changes in the performance metrics this makes in going from ideal cycle to the actual cycle. So, we will redo the previous example, but now we take the um, uh, evaporator and condenser pressure to be 200 and 900 kilo Pascal respectively. So, this means that uh, Th remains at 30 degrees Celsius and Tc remains at minus 5 degree Celsius. But we have changed the evaporator and the condenser pressure. So, interestingly you can see that T sat corresponding to the evaporator pressure is minus 10 degree Celsius. So, you can see that T c is greater than T sat corresponding to T e. Okay, so, that uh, heat can be abstracted by the uh, refrigerant from the refrigerator compartment. So, refrigerator compartment is maintained at minus 5 degrees Celsius, but the refrigerant is at a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius when it enters the evaporator. So, that means heat flows from the refrigerated compartment to the refrigerant. Similarly, T sat corresponding to uh, the condenser pressure is 35.5 degrees Celsius, whereas the ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So, heat transfer can comfortably take place between the uh, refrigerant and the ambient. So, state 1 now is slightly superheated. So, from the superheated table we can uh, retrieve appropriate property values H1 and S1. 
H2S may be evaluated in the uh, same manner as before by using the fact that S2S equal to S1 and P2S equal to PC, the condenser pressure. So, once we do that, uh, we can evaluate H2 or yeah, we can evaluate H2 by making use of the definition of uh, the isentropic efficiency of the compressor and H2 comes out to be 292.82 kilojoule per kilogram. And the corresponding value for specific entropy may be evaluated by interpolation from the superheated table. So, the power required now uh, comes out to be 2.177 kilowatts. Now, state 3 is a subcooled liquid. Notice that state 3 uh, uh, at state 3, the pressure of the refrigerant is 900 kilo Pascal, temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So, it is a compressed liquid or subcooled liquid and we evaluate uh, the enthalpy uh, using this approximation right. So, this is actually an approximation and the specific enthalpy comes out to be 93.688 and S3 comes out to be equal to SF approximately at 30 degrees Celsius. Now, H4 equal to H3 still because it is an isenthalpic process and dryness fraction at uh, uh, state 4 may be evaluated from here and using this dryness fraction S4 may be evaluated just like what we did before as 0 0.3646. So, notice that uh, from uh, state 3 to state 4 the specific entropy increases as it should because throttling is an isenthalpic process. So, these are consistency checks that you can use when you are doing the calculation. Just make sure that the numbers that you are getting uh, are what they ought to be at least qualitatively. So, rate of heat removal from the refrigerator space is 2.184 tons compared to 2.167 tons. So, more heat is uh, removed now. Mass flow rate of the refrigerant remains the same. So, the reason for uh, this is that state point 3 has now moved to the left of where it was before which means that state point 4 is going to be uh, further to the left of where it was before. This is uh, very evident here. So, which means if it is over here then uh, the amount of heat that can be removed from the new state point 4 to the new state 1 is going to be more than what it was before. So, earlier state point 4 was over here and state point 1 was over here. So, the amount of heat that could be removed earlier was less than what it is now. So, the COP for the cycle comes out to be 3.53 uh, uh, which is less than what we had before. The heat removal has increased. However, the power uh, has also if you look at the power this is 2.177 and earlier we had uh, 1.6211 kilowatts. This is 45 percent less than the COP for the ideal cycle. Okay. So, rate of heat removal in the condenser again from steady flow energy equation uh, comes out to be 9.857 and once again exergy supplied uh, in the cycle uh, is equal to the power that is given to the compressor. So, that is 2.177 and exergy recovered from the condenser and from the evaporator. So, together it comes out to be like this. Notice that TH is still 30 degrees Celsius, TC is still minus 5 degrees Celsius as we wrote down here. Okay. So, TH is still 30, this is still minus 5, I am sorry. So, the second law efficiency comes out to be 47 percent only, which is actually 45 percent less than the second law efficiency for the ideal cycle. Again, this is due to the fact that, uh, this is due to the fact that, uh, you know, the, um, uh, if you look at the cycle, you can see that you know now the temperature differences in this case 
or uh, external irreversibility increases in the uh, uh, in the condenser. So, the loss of uh, or the destruction of exergy is going to be higher in the condenser. Okay. So, earlier uh, all the exergy destruction was in the compressor. Now, the exergy destruction in the compressor more or less remains the same. Okay. But the exergy destruction in the condenser has increased considerably and the exergy destruction in the throttling valve also increases somewhat because of the fact that it is now entering as a uh, slightly uh, subcooled liquid. Okay. Because as I said before, um, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle is used mostly in uh, domestic applications, refrigerator air conditioners. It can also be used in uh, for cooling of buildings and so on. But a single uh, refrigerator, uh, single cycle or a cycle with a single refrigerant will not be adequate for such purposes. So, normally you either use a, a cascade refrigeration uh, system, which uh, which cascades one refrigerant cycle on top of the, on top of the other okay so that is uh, that is one way of doing this because there are also uh, there is also something called a multi stage refrigeration uh, cycle which uses multiple stages to uh, to do this both are uh, acceptable basically the idea is uh, so if you go back to the block diagram the basic idea is this heat rejection in the case of a multi stage or cascade sort of cycle this heat rejection does not take place to the ambient but it actually this condenser for one cycle becomes the evaporator for the next cycle and that the condenser for the second cycle which is the upper cycle will then uh, reject heat to the uh, to the ambient okay so that is how these are coupled and and together this can give uh, very good performance and uh, can be used for even larger uh, applications than the refrigerator or air conditioner. Of course, one important aspect about the uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle and indeed refrigeration is the use of environmentally friendly refrigerants. Okay? We have not paid any attention to that. When you uh, do a course on refrigeration and air conditioning, the details and the impact of refrigerants on the environment will be discussed in great, um, uh, in, in great length. It, this is very important because uh, the refrigerants have uh, uh, the potential to cause damage to the uh, ozone layer and also cause global warming. So, we need environmentally friendly refrigerants which is what we are using nowadays. Okay? Plus other refrigerants which are non-flammable, which have much better environment uh, friendly properties and so on are also being developed. Okay. But these are usually discussed at the in the next level uh, course on refrigeration and air conditioning. So, this uh, concludes our uh, uh, lectures on uh, thermodynamic cycles where we looked at Rankine cycle, air standard cycles where uh, within which we saw we uh, discussed air standard Brayton cycle, air standard auto and air standard diesel cycle and then vapor compression refrigeration cycle which is the only power absorbing cycle among all these cycles. The next module that we will uh, uh, take up is psychrometry.